one of the things that comes up in auto shops, and we're always trying to put you in the know when it comes to your car. So when you go to the auto shop or that little yellow check engine light comes on, you have an idea why. Well, with Matt being out, I thought I would bring in some help. So also today I have John Riggle. He's the lead diagnostician at Tri-City Transmission and Auto Repair. Good to have you, John. Good morning, Dick. Thanks for joining us. And uh, today I thought I'd talk about the most ignored check engine light or diagnostic trouble code that we see come in the shop every day. And uh, this is a P0456. You hear us talking a lot about codes and people calling in and say, hey, the code was this or the code was that. And uh, it's P0456 or P0455. Very common. And it's, it, uh, its short definition is a evaporative small leak or gross leak. Yep. And John, maybe you can help us out. What's an evaporative leak? Okay. So the evaporative emission system on your car, the fuel tank has to be sealed at some point uh, so we don't let too many fuel vapors out of it. But you can't totally seal an evap system because you would draw the fuel tank into a vacuum and never be able to get any fuel out of it. So it has to be able to vent without letting any fuel vapors get into the atmosphere. So we use a charcoal canister to vent those fumes out of the gas tanks. You can't smell fuel vapor out of your car. Um, but we have to make sure that this system has integrity. It doesn't leak any place other than venting through that cap. So that's what the evaporative emissions fuel system is. And you, you mentioned something to me, and I think most people don't realize this, but the uh, ev fuel evaporating off the, you know off the top of the fuel level in the yep. fuel tank, uh, if that escapes out in the atmosphere, that's a whole lot more pollutant than it's what's coming out of the tailpipe. Way more than what's coming out the tailpipe. If you use an exhaust gas analyzer at the tailpipe, you might see 10 to 20 parts per million of hydrocarbons, which is raw fuel, hydrocarbons. And from a evap leak, that's 24,600 parts per million. So evap emissions is huge. huge, yeah, compared to tailpipe emissions. So you guys might re recognize it as this. It's the gas cap code, right? Because yeah. your little your little uh, yellow light comes on. My wife's got one on her car right now. It's a 2016 uh, Grand Cherokee, and she has an evaporative emissions issue going on. So I've got to get it into the dealer here one because <laughs> it's under, <laughs> under warranty yet. But uh, I was telling her yesterday, I said, you see that little orange light? She goes, yeah. I said, that's actually a uh, side view of an engine that hasn't looked like that in like 30, 40 years. Yeah, exactly. But huh? that's what an engine used to look like. Yeah. And so that's a little outline of the, uh, of the engine. But that's a check engine light. And so when your check engine light comes on, people roll down to Acme Auto Parts. The people at Acme Auto Parts plug into it. And they say, oh, that's probably just a gas cap. Yep. You know, so hey, we happen to have those inside. If you want to buy one, uh, they're mm -hmm. just fourteen bucks. Let me sell you a gas cap. Oh, while we're here, they sell you some other little tchotchkes there at the counter. But uh, you know, it is the reason it's a gas cap code because they're extremely hard to diagnose when there is, uh, especially for a small leak. Oh yeah. So yeah. your your fuel system, your car self tests, so it will pressurize that fuel system or pull it under a vacuum yep. to check for leaks of the fuel system. So we can't have fuel vapors going in the atmosphere. And uh, you know it is common that fuel caps could be the issue. Yep. So it's a good cheap guess, but here's where it becomes an expensive guess. Okay, so you do have a a leak somewhere in the system, and you go into Acme Auto Parts, and they sell you the fuel cap for 12 bucks, and you go stick it on. Well, that fuel cap they sold you is not as good as the one that's on the car in some yep. cases. Mm -hmm. Okay, So you put that one on the car, and now you have two leaks because you have the one that was originally there that you still got to find, and now you've got the cheap gas cap on there that's leaking as well. Yep. So I'm a little bit hesitant to just pitch a gas cap at it unless you're going to put on a good gas cap. So uh, the, the problem with that code that turns on the check engine light is it comes into our shop. They say, oh, I know about that. That's just an emissions thing. Yeah, it's just thing. an emissions thing. Yeah, I don't need to worry about that. Yeah. Don't need to worry about it. And they'll ask the question, hey, will it harm anything if I don't fix it? No, just the environment. But, uh, you know, the problem with that light being on and you ignoring it is that light comes on for 273 different reasons. And I just made that number up. Yeah, because it's like 1,500. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 1,500 reasons. Yeah. So once it's on, it doesn't discriminate. So you don't know why it's on. And if it's on all the time, one of these times it is going to come on. It is going to be something important that you need to know about before you head out of town right. with a car. So it is something that you should uh, you should address. But at the same time, 
you know, John, there, the, because there's so many different ways, you know, BMW does it one way, Chrysler does it a different way. And not only that, between the different generations of their technology, mm-hmm. they each do it different that way, too. So there's yep. like 75 different variations of how the system works. Oh, yeah. And most people in the business don't even understand how they work. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So some of your seasoned guys like you, John, you know how the system works and you've watched the, you know, the generations yep. of it, how they work. And so you understand how it works. But... A lot of people don't, and that's that's where the confusion, I think, comes in for the customers. We were talking before the show about mystery pairs, and that may be one where you might experience a mystery pair or two. How many times have, are we the third shop that, yeah. that's looked at a car for that yeah, problem? Yeah, and unfortunately, what everybody does is assume it's the gas cap. So the first thing a guy does is walk out, open the filler door, and tighten the gas cap. Everybody does that before they actually run a pressure test on the system. So now you don't know if you fixed it or not, because when you test it now, if it doesn't have a leak, you don't know if you had an intermittent problem or if the gas cap was really loose. So it just gets missed a whole lot of times. That, that, that's one code that you can probably plan on making two trips back to get it fixed. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. They're not, I mean, even as, even as you know, I, I think we're good at it at our shop, but but we, we can still miss because yep. there could be more than one hole. Oh, you yeah. Know? So we actually, one of, one of the ways we, we go to go about fixing these leaks is we actually pressurize the system and we use uh, smoke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll smoke the system, and it's ultraviolet, right? Yeah, put, yeah, it's got a dye in it. Put mm-hmm. dye in it so we can see it. And it smells like baby oil. Yeah, which yeah. I like. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but the you know, the problem with that is some leaks are so small that the smoke doesn't even come out of there. Yep, yep. And so you, you get down to leaks ten thousandths of an inch in diameter. Uh, and these systems normally will test down on a small leak test to a leak that is the equivalent of a pinhole 20 thousandths of an inch in diameter. That's actually the, the law. But in order to make that law, some of the manufacturers had to be able to test down to 10 thousandths of an inch. Uh, a hole that has a diameter of 10 thousandths of an inch, this smoke with the oil in it will not go through that. You can't see it. So it makes it difficult to find. It's kind of like this. You're chasing a needle hole in a car, not in a haystack, but in a car, chasing yeah. a needle hole. Mm-hmm. So it's that small. And there's all kinds of stuff like at the top of the gas tank. You certainly can't see up there because it's up against the bottom of the car. Uh, there's all kinds of lines that go from the from the gas tank all the way to the front of the car. So there's a lot of pieces and components there. And even like on minivans and stuff, stuff is buried in the panels of the car. Sure. So you're not, yeah. you know, you just got to pull panels off to see what's going on in there. So it's, it's a tough one. And Pretty much if you're out there and you're driving a car and you keep them for five, ten years, you've ran into this it, before. Yeah. It, it, everybody, because it's such a precise system, it's pretty easy for that thing to turn that little that little orange light on there that looks like an outline of a motor that I don't even recognize anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, what are the most common things, uh, John, that turn that light on and might give people that uh, that PO 456 or 455? Well, my neighborhood is wrong gas caps. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I never get to replace gas caps except for, I never find a bad gas cap. All I ever find is wrong gas caps because somebody already went and put a new gas cap on the car, but they've got one that was the wrong application. They didn't look it up right or something. I see lots of wrong gas caps. Other than that, um, it's legitimate leaks in uh, cracked sending units, uh, hoses or lines that deteriorate on older cars. Chrysler's famous for having rubber hoses that just deteriorate over a part, period of time and crack and split. Um, so that's probably the most common stuff that we see. Yeah, for sure. So now the gas cap thing is, you know, we're here in St. Gas Cap, and if you do pull into Acme Auto Parts and they do, do tell you you need a new gas cap, I'm just going to, I'm really going to steer you away from that. I'm sorry, Acme. I'm not trying to not sell your gas caps for you. But uh, you know what? If you got a General Motors product, go get yourself a General Motors gas cap. And the one that specifically fits that car, and it's ordered based off the VIN number. That's the vehicle identification yep. number. And uh, that's the one you want for the car. And it's not necessarily going to be any more, but you're going to have to drive down to the, you know, the GM dealership and pick yeah. one up. You know, or if it, you know, if it's at our shop, we're going to buy a factory gas cap, the one that came with that yeah, car. And, the, and the, tr- the trick with that, part of the trick is a lot of the aftermarket caps don't have the tether. That's the little uh, a plastic holder that holds that gas cap to keep you from dropping it on the ground. And that's one of the big reasons why we see fuel caps fail. People drop them on the ground or they get, they get left at the service station and then the check engine light comes on. That one's pretty obvious. 
For sure. So that's a that's a, a popular diagnostic issue in a shop. The other thing that causes a lot of weird diagnostic issues that go un, unfigured out sometimes is bad batteries. And a bad battery, the problem with a bad battery, when you got one that still starts the car but it's weak enough to lose memory when the car sits overnight, yep. that causes a heck of a lot of weird intermittent issues. So mm -hmm. for batteries, the first thing we do when a car comes into our shop, we test the battery. And if it needs a battery, we call the people up and say, hey, you need a battery. And we happen to have interstate batteries here on our shelf because they're a, a battery that's covered from coast to coast. They've got a great warranty with a two-year free replacement, and uh, they're just a good battery. So that's... Probably in 80, 90% of the shops here in town, interstate batteries. So that's what I'm oh, going to yeah. push, uh, you know, for your car.